to another webisode this week here on Royals Channel. Well, Pastor Elise, you brought an amazing message on Sunday Thanks called so. Battle of the Border. Do you mind just opening that up for us this morning? Yeah, absolutely. Sunday was such a fantastic morning. Mm -hmm. There was so much victory in the room Definitely. and there was such a sense of breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And our whole month has been given to celebrating. Our theme this month mm -hmm. is Cue the Confetti. It means get ready for the celebration, mm -hmm. prepare for the victory. And so I felt before I even arrived on the Sunday mm -hmm. that God was wanting to bring something celebratory to the room that wow. there would be a sense of breakthrough for Amen. people and and before we even began ministering I felt as I was praying and just committing what was happening to the Lord, I felt like God just said, remind them I'm the God of the victory. And I think yes. I said it maybe a hundred times. <laughs> He's the God of the victory because yeah. sometimes we know that, mm. but we don't know it. We can say it, but we don't truly believe that or receive it. it. We can sing it. We yeah. can talk about it. But the Bible is so clear that it's not just what we say, it's actually what we believe. Wow. And so sometimes we have to say it until we believe it. So yes. I felt that morning that God was wanting to bring breakthrough because there's so many blockages so many. in our hearts and our lives. And so the battle mm. of the border was the title of the sermon. And it mm. came from 2 Samuel 5, 17 to 25. And it's this powerful moment in the in this book of Samuel where David is anointed to be king. It's actually the transition is about to wow. take place. And the Bible says that the Philistines heard. <laughs> they didn't see, they yes. didn't witness. They just heard that David had been anointed king. Now that must have incited something because they, it says, this is yeah. what the NLT version says. It says they mobilized all their forces to capture him. They're like, oh, David, we all know of about David. Yeah, because yeah. once you're, you can be anointed, but there's something of the appointment wow. that took place. And they said, we don't want this guy in this position. And it says they mobilized, not some, but all of their forces just Ooh. because of what they heard was on his life. So I want you to imagine today that God is just, does something in your life that brings promotion. Yes. And then the enemy says, I am so intimidated by what's on your life, Hope, that I'm going to mobilize wow. all the forces. That is so intimidating mm. to anybody. But the scripture teaches us exactly what David did in that moment of yes. battle. And I loved this story and I gave three points of what he did. Um, and we're going to go into that this morning, yeah. but I really loved this part of scripture because it shows who David really was. Yes. Like I know his for character. me, yeah, his yeah. character, who he was in the moment of there's a mobilized force against him. Mm. The Bible is so clear. And it says that David ran into a stronghold. And when I looked up the word stronghold, it was clear that it was a fortified place. Wow. So whenever there was an attack, it was something that was prepared for wow. the attack. Prepared. And I believe for us spiritually, there has mm. to be a prepared place in the spirit where we go yep. whenever the enemy comes against us. And so David in this moment, it says he runs to a stronghold. And, yeah. and I want to ask you today, where do you run when things like this happen? Mm. When the enemy mobilizes his force against you and you know that victory is yours because the Bible has promised that. Amen. So you might be on the border, yes. like the border of there's victory mm. for me, but I'm still stuck in the battle. What will you do with that moment? Yes. And it says that David runs into the stronghold and he starts to have a conversation with God. Such David thing to do, such right? Such a David thing yeah. to do, but such a simple thing to do I know, as well. It sounds like we think it's like he's this amazing king. He's got all this complicated, but his systems and like we said, just simple things simple, he did. Yeah. So Sunday we spoke about yeah. running under the shadow mm. of the almighty and sitting under his wing. So if all David did, he ran to a, a fortified place. Yes. He sat with God and he had a conversation. Wow. And so I believe mm -hmm. that for us, there's victory. And, and let me say this, I am a preacher who I preach like get up, you got to fight, you got to yeah. mobilize, you got to do that. But there's also a time when you've got to hide yes. under the shadow of the almighty God. Yeah. There's a time when it, the Bible is clear, it says the battle is not yours, it belongs, belongs to the Lord. Lord. Exactly. And so when we live out of that position of the battle actually yes. is not mine, I know I'm a mm. fix it person. <laughs> yeah. You know this about me, <laughs> yeah. you're a bit yeah. this way as well. We're like, I want to fix it, mm. I want to do that. And if we live always dependent on our ability to fix things, we will forget that yeah. the battle actually belongs to God. Yes. So my job isn't to win every battle. My job like David is to go under the okay. shadow of the almighty God and then have a conversation with him. And that's exactly what David did. Exactly what he, he did. He just started a dialogue. Actually, I'd love to just yeah. read that little part if we don't mind. Um, Let's go to it. So David asked the Lord, should I go out to fight the Philistines? 
<laughs> some of us are already fighting and then asking wow. God for the battle plan. Uh, post, post. Actually doing it, yeah. And let me say, it's very hard to fix things after it's done. Yep. Right? <laughs> yes. It is so much better to think it through, make mm. a plan. God, what do you want me to do with this? And he says, should I go out and do this? And I love that he had the decency to ask God. He had yes. the sense to ask God. And God gives him this whole plan of exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And he overcomes the enemy and he calls that place Baal Perazim. And he simply says, the Lord did it. That's so simple. The Lord did it. He yeah. doesn't say, I, I did, did it. it. He says, the, the Lord did it. Yeah, yeah. because he learned that it is God who fights mm. the battle. Um, when I looked up Baal Perazim, it means the place of breaking through or the bursting of waters. Wow. So I believe that God actually wants to burst forth in our life yeah. and there's a victory that's ours, but we actually have to allow him to be wow. that place, Baal Perazim. For David, Baal Perazim was a literal place. He named the wow. place Baal Perazim because it is here that the Lord broke through. Yeah. And I wonder in our lives if there's places that we can say, this yes. is actually the moment the Lord broke right through. Here. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And I, I was just thinking about when you were talking about the stronghold, mm. that it's not if I should have a stronghold, it's when will I need to use it? Absolutely. When will I need to go there? Yep. And because like you said, Pastor Elise, you talked about, you know, we talk about this victory and sometimes there's this immature mindset of the victory without the battle. Mm. But actually it's not that, oh, maybe I better go get this place ready because oh, if something bad happens, actually no, it's when is it? Because as Christians, we're going to be faced yep. up against battle after battle, if it's relationship, Absolutely. if it's mindset, if it's financial, if it's mm -hmm. work, it doesn't matter what area of our life, it's actually, are we prepared? Yeah. Do we have that constant place? Yeah. Have we set up ourselves ready mm -hmm. for that battle? And we do, Absolutely. and that's the promise, like you said, is that we actually do get the victory, yeah. but God has actually put in his word and example mm. after example, like David's just yeah. one, but we yeah. can see over and over again, it's the ones that, like you said, talk to God, mm -hmm. ask him where to go. And then he, their obedience that follows that. Absolutely. We see the victory every time. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of the story of the virgins, mm. the ones with oil, the ones without, waiting yes. on the bridegroom to come. And, and there are times, and I say this with all sensitivity, but there are times when things are happening and it's almost too late. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like oh. there's devastation in my life, but I haven't built a life of prayer or, or there's an attack of the enemy, but I don't know the word of yeah. God. We have to use our time to know God. Wow. So the, the fortified place was already built. David yes. couldn't, it doesn't mention here, that David went and built it. No, he didn't run away quickly, get no, it ready. It was, a, it was already wow. prepared. He already had established. something set up. And in the spirit, we actually have a responsibility to set up a fortified place. Mm. And, and how we do that is through prayer and through the word. Sunday morning, I mm. spoke about a study that was done with outstanding results. It's from the Center for Bible Engagement. I talked about that they had studied 40,000 participants from 40, eight 000. to 80. And these are the results of people who had read the word one to two days. It said that there was insignificant changes in their life on the yeah. charts and they measured key areas of their life. Mm -hmm not much change. So those one to two times might be sitting in a church on Sunday, Sunday yep. or scrolling Instagram and seeing a scripture, scripture. Right, right. right? So insignificant. Day three, if you've read the Bible or engaged in the Bible for three or more days per week, it says that there's a blip on the map, the map there starts yeah. to be a little heartbeat, but it's at four days, they say there is this radical spike. Wow. It says it almost went off the chart. And this is what happened when people who had read their word four or more days a week. It said loneliness dropped 30% hmm. wow. from just reading the word. Anger dropped 32%. Bitterness dropped 40%. Alcoholism dropped 57%. Wow. Spiritual stagnation dropped 60%. Pornography drops 61%. These are key areas of their life that by reading the word of God four or more times a week actually yeah. had a significant impact on their life. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna encourage you today. And when I said this Sunday, I, I read the room, people's eyes were open yes. and mouths were almost dropped a little bit. I saw people shaking their head in, in, a, in awe, mm. but we have to realize this, this shouldn't surprise us. This is the living it's word of promised. God. Yeah. And it has the ability, when we set it up as a fortified yes. place, the enemy cannot overtake that. Wow. The Bible says that there's life and death in our tongue. Yes, so, so powerful. To speak life and to speak the word of God, we actually have to know 
the word yes, of God. Exactly. Or, or you might not know it verbatim. You not, might not mm. be able to sit there and quote that. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but one of love. And But you might not be mm. able to quote scripture verbatim. But if you would just sit in the word of wow. God and let it penetrate your heart, that starts to set up a fortified place. But that fortified place is not just reading of the word. It's knowing God. It's yes. having conversation with God. Yes. And that's exactly what David did. And so much what so. I loved about this story is just his obedience. So obedient. Like what one one instruction and then direct obedience. Absolutely. I love this part of the story. I'll just go back hmm. to it a little bit. Um, there was this moment where the Philistines have attacked. He gets the battle plan. He overcomes hmm. them. But it says that they come back again. <laughs> again. Again. I, I don't know about you, and I said this Sunday, but I don't know if you've ever felt like I've dealt with that yes. thing and then I it exactly. represents. And you're like, I thought we dealt with this. I thought I had overcome this. Yeah. But it says the Philistines represent again. Again. This is what it says. And David goes and asks the Lord again, what should I do? Mm. And the Lord says to him, do not attack them straight on. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. When you hear a sound, this is the part. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be alert. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. Yeah. Now, that is such a strange portion of scripture. Yeah, it's like, why that? When you yeah. hear a noise in a tree, the only thing I can relate that to mm. is hearing wind in the trees. Yes. Because like when you other. hear marching feet, it's almost like the brushing of leaves and the moving mm. of trees. When you hear that, David, that's your signal. <laughs> I'm moving ahead of you and I'm defeating the Philistine army. Now, let me just say this, sounds great. Yeah. Such an awesome scripture and I love, I love things mm. like that. I can preach the life out of it, but put yourself in that position. Yes. You are dealing with the might of the Philistine army and God says to you, when you hear a sound in the trees, but, that's me going ahead of you. But how he says, go and wait at the trees. There's yeah. just a patience in waiting it is. as well. It's patience. It's this radical obedience to <laughs> Like Amazing. when you hear us, like you imagine if God said, like you're asking God some major thing and he says, yeah. hope when you hear a sound in the tree, know that that's me Go moving ahead of you. sit underneath the tree for a while. <laughs> it's this mystery of God that it's David amazing. was so willing to be part of and not afraid of the, yeah. the mystery. He was like, okay, when I hear that sound, I know that you're moving ahead of me. <laughs> this guy understood something so about the so. nature of God. He understood to trust the mystery of when I hear that, then I know that you're going out wow. ahead of me. And this is why he had those Balperazim moments. And that's why he was said the man after, like you can see after that these God's things heart. lead up yeah. to being why he was named yeah. what he was named. Yeah, it was the simple obedience. It was the willingness to have conversations with God. But I think he learned that on the field when he was just a shepherd boy. Good point. Yeah, yes. he was out there. There was very few people around. No. It was just these herds <laughs> of sheep that he was responsible for. And I don't know about you, but have you ever just been cleaning or by mm. yourself and you start to have these whole conversations, whole conversations. in your head? <laughs> Sometimes they're not good. They're like mm. you're imagining things that have never happened and, and all of that. But David must have learned how to communicate with God because in that moment, because who we are, let's go here, because yes, who we are really comes out under pressure. Definitely. It's not when things are peaches and cream. No. <laughs> it's when there's pressure what really comes out. And I know yeah. in my own life, like, let's be real. Sometimes under pressure, things that aren't good come out of me. Sometimes mm. things that I'm not proud of, I think or I say, yeah. but we have to learn who we really are. That's who we are. And that's what God actually wants to work on. Wow. But under pressure, what? twice when he faced an attack, both times he said, God, what do you want me to do? Both God, times. what do you yeah. want me to do? And both times, the strategy was different. Sunday, I spoke a little a bit about when David went and faced Goliath, he ran out on the field with a slingshot and five stones. Yeah. What if David had just assumed that that's how God was going to do it again? Wow. Right? Sometimes yeah. we're, we're stuck. I said this on Sunday and yeah. I saw people laughing like, yeah. you know, I, there's people who God, we call them glory days, like back in oh, 1986, yes. when I yeah, this. <laughs> yeah. God did it this way. Well, God did it that way then, but the Bible says, behold, I do a new thing. Wow. What is God wanting to do now? Imagine if David didn't bother to have that conversation wow. and he just said, well, he did it that way then. 
that's how he'll do it now. Wow. And he runs on the field. And that wasn't the, neither no. of those two strategies no. worked. Not even the second time was it the same. Different The method. second time he says, don't go at them on the front, mm. go around them encircle and circle them. around them, come from behind them, but wait till you hear a noise in the tree. <laughs> like this yeah. is why daily relationship with God is so important because so. the way God did it before is not necessarily the way God will do it no, again. now. Yeah. And this is why that border and the battle of it is a daily conversation with wow. God. Sunday, I spoke a little bit about when I speak to my parents, mm. I don't say, dear heavenly, dear earthly father. <laughs> I sort of look at you like, uh, are I you okay? come to you today and I ask you. Can you imagine we talk to each other like my, that? I, I laughed on Sunday, I said my mum would probably love it, but that's not, <laughs> that's not how I no. talk. That's not my conversation. No. And sometimes we're treating God like this, foreign being wow. who we don't know dear like when i meet you in the morning yeah. i don't say good morning dearest hope like <laughs> i don't do that right no. you greet me with welcome to another <laughs> glorious <laughs> gathering <laughs> but i don't greet you with um here dearest hope i, I have dear a right hope. right yeah. because i know you there's a comfortability mm. and i'm not saying to be familiar with god but no. i'm saying to be comfortable with god yes familiar and comfortable are two different things there's so still true. reverence there's honor but when i know him as a father he said you're you're no longer on the no. out you're no longer a servant you're, you're a son son so ownership. i need to speak to him yeah. like he is my father and so but, david mm. in this moment he just says what do i do and I wonder if we would start to talk to God like that. God, yes. what do you want me to actually do with this? How do you want me to overcome this battle? Mm. To be comfortable with God so that we would it. learn how to get from the battle to the victory is so important. So important. And I love what you said too there. There's this sense of David had this reverence about God, but also in his life, it, he was so humble because I love how you said back here, when they named the place, mm -hmm. he named it, the Lord did it. Mm. He didn't name it David's first battle or David's yeah. beat the Philistines again. Mm. You know, he doesn't actually do that. He yeah. humbles himself every time. Yeah. And he, he gives goes, instant credit to God. Instantly. Yeah. Because, and the thing is, what would have been beautiful, I think, is the people that were around David, mm. that they would have not seen him in a sense of a king who had this, like, I have to do it for my nation. I have to do it for our country. Mm. And it has to be all about me, this recognition. He always, every single time yeah, I read anything about David, yeah. it's always pointed back to God. Mm. And I, I, I wonder too in our lives, like you said before, what would we name places? And that mm -hmm. was one of your, your points, yeah. actually point two, I think yeah, it, was, it was, is what would you name it? Would we name it, oh, Hope did an awesome job at you. Yeah. Like, did, yeah. oh, Hope did this. What would we name it? Would we actually be the humble ourselves and give honor where it was due. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is where you did you this. You did it, yeah. You did this here and yeah. you did that there. And Lord, Lord, that's where you restored relationship. Lord, yeah. that's where you broke through my finance. Lord, that's where you built relationship. Lord, that's where you helped yeah. me forgive. Yeah. Would we actually put that ownership yeah. and recognize? Yeah, because David, like, let's just be clear. David could have called it the place where the Philistines attacked me twice. <laughs> what a name, yeah, but right? I get it. He could have. He could have said, this was the place. And that's that victim mentality that wow. God actually wants to Come smash on, in our lives. Like he could have said, I I don't know about you, but yeah. like you ever been promoted to something and then the enemy attacks and you're like, but I'm meant to be celebrate, yeah. right? He could have named it the place where wow. I should have been celebrating, but I wasn't. I was dealing wow. with the Philistine attack. We have the ability to Come name on. it what we want. What Amen. I said on Sunday, what will you name this year? Will you name yes. it COVID-19? Come on. Or what will you name it? Mm. Will you name it the place where God came through for me? The place of breakthrough, the yes. place where oppression lifted and depression departed. Like what do you name the place yes. that God has given you? Balperazim, the bursting forth of the waters, the yes. breaking through, right? Yes. He chose what to name that place. He, and yeah. I love this. I heard this recently. Um, they were saying it was like a life coach was doing some training and he yeah. said, you have the ability, you are an author to your life. Wow. So you have the me. ability to write out. If you don't like the story, change what's being Rewrite written. Rewrite it. Right? On, yeah. So what you are doing every time you name something. I said Come to on. parents on Sunday, when you name your kids brats, you're naming them. Wow. You're speaking life into that. Now that's what they will become. Mm. You are naming this year. You are naming your workplace. You're naming your church. 
So David could have said the place where I should have celebrated, but I didn't. I, the place where mm. the Philistines attacked, the place where I had to run. See, you gotta understand David was a warrior, but he still ran to find that fortified place. Yeah. The place where I had fear, the place mm. where I felt intimidated, but he didn't. He no. said, I had all of those experiences, but the end result is Baal Perizim, the Lord yes. who bursts forth, the Lord who breaks through. So yeah. we have to name, mm. we have to know what we're naming this and believe God with every part of us that he is the place of the bursting forth of waters, exactly. the breakthrough. Exactly, and he yeah. is the God of the breakthrough. Amen. Well, I hope that's blessed you this week, that just a reminder that our God, he is the God of victory. That there is an obedience, there is a, a, a relationship, there's a communication with him that you can have too and see God breakthrough on your behalf. Well, thanks for joining us for another webisode. We look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us at the Royals YouTube channel. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. If that blessed you, make sure you share it with a family member or friend. We can't wait to see you next time for another glorious gathering.